Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey folks, Steve Stack coming to you from, where are we at? I think we're in Tyanesta now. Tyanesta, Project Tyanesta with the renovation hunters. I'm losing track. They're chasing us all over the country, Adam. That's all right. It keeps us busy, right? <laughs> right? Folks, Adam with Lazy Guy DIY. Uh, that's false. I've seen you scattering. There ain't, there ain't no way you should be affiliated with Lazy. Well, my wife would disagree if I, uh, <laughs> that's where that came from. So, like, if I didn't finish a project at home, that Lazy Guy didn't finish that again. So, that's, my wife says it, no one else does. Right? Uh, we met out in Nebraska, like I did most of the folks, and and uh, one of your projects was was refurbishing, rebuilding, starting over, and build a new cabinet in that kitchen out there. And yes, sir. It was accented by that wall control panel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you never know what they're going to throw at throw at you from renovation hunters, right? No, sir. And that one was. Uh... The challenge of that one was hilarious is people would walk in the room because it was an extended porch, it would shift. And so I'd take a measurement and then I'd walk out do a cut and somebody else would be in there and then that thing would move again. And I was like, I, I know I'm not losing my mind on this, but <laughs> sure enough, and we got it, it turned out great. Give us a little background. What, what does, when, you, when you're not on location with renovation hunters, how do you spend your time in your workshop? So uh, I build a lot of custom furniture. That's my uh, big thing, designing a lot of mid-century modern, uh, which I haven't done any mid-century modern yet because uh, we're doing rustic cabins and everything. Yeah, yeah. But uh, projects around the house, we have old 1920s craftsmen, um, do a lot of built-ins and things there that I've been working on and whatever pretty much my wife wants me to do. And then I've got three kids that I'm chasing around on top of all that. Where do you call home? Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay, so, so you're right down there. Uh, what what's your takeaway with the three projects that we've been involved in together? Uh, just let me ask you this. Uh, we'll start we'll start small, and, and by no means is this this small. I've I've been asked when I left Nebraska and got back home, how would you describe Nebraska in one word? Ginormous. <laughs> We, was, we were close. We were close. My word was vastness. Yep. <laughs> right? It, it was huge compared to everything else. I mean, that was a big place. We all got there and we were like, oh my goodness, this this whole thing, you're going to have us do this whole thing? And we did. It was amazing. Um, but it was that was a huge undertaking. Right. And then we went home for a few weeks and then roll call was at, at uh, Project Kreitz mm -hmm. down in Virginia. And and we went from one extreme to the other. It was crazy. You go from however many thousand square feet to like 300 <laughs> square feet and you can't get everybody in the place. And I mean, you talk from um, like almost like a craftsman style, sort of like a four square to a 1870s cabin with log cabin walls and everything. I mean, that is, that, that's a complete change up. It was unbelievable. We, we went from volume to not a lot of volume, <laughs> but for that location, that cabin belonged there in a completed quaint. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a you have a little pond there. You have, I mean, I'm a Virginia boy, so I mean, and grew up going in the woods and everything. So I mean, it couldn't have been more home to me uh, right there. So uh, beautiful, and I mean, I was so excited about that one. That was that was, that was a great great property, and now we find ourselves up here in Tyanesta. In reality, the first time we've run across conventional construction, mm -hmm. you have half a chance of finding a stud in the wall. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we laugh about it, but it, it really does make you guys' undertaking that much easier. Oh yeah, when we put uh, putting the ceiling up, I mean, when you can see from room to room and your lines match up, yeah. that's, 
What are the chances of that happening anywhere else we've yeah, been? It wasn't going to. <laughs> no, it wasn't going to. It was luck. It was a happy accident, we call it, right? Yeah, right. So so in your day-to-day, -day, what's, what's, what's your favorite thing to build for folks? You mentioned the furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, or would you rather be job site doing cabinetry work? You know, um, so I grew up flipping houses with my dad. We'd buy a house, we'd tear it down in studs, and then we'd go back and put that thing put it on the market. And so that's that's pretty much how I learned how to do things, how I cut my teeth, and then using tools and everything. But I mean, furniture making, one of my favorite things, uh, the table I did in Kreitz. Um, yes. Worked on that, the rustic uh, farmhouse table there. I mean, I was in my happy place all day long, working on that, shaving it down, making everything. That was everything. a monster, that oh, was a monster. It, it was huge, and the maple from you guys. Yeah, that was that eight quarter rough maple that you Beautiful. requested and we sent down there and, and you brought it to life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's that's my happy place is creating with my hands and doing that and making furniture. That's. And you, you shared with me earlier this week that you're getting back to some of the house flipping mm -hmm. and uh, you're keeping yourself busy. Yep, I mean, as things come up, and, and I, I don't like to do the same thing all the time. I'm not one of those guys that's a production guy that does cutting boards, does the same tables, furnitures, anything else. I have to constantly be doing something different, new, learning something new. And I mean, I, I guess I'm ADD in that sense. Yeah. That I gotta keep making stuff. So Adam, before I let you leave, uh, I've learned of a partnership mm -hmm. that you have uh, besides your own business and besides your partnership with Renovation Hunters, you have a partnership with our good friend, Rach. That's correct. We, tell, tell us about it. We have Makers Challenge Central, which is, it, it's the biggest woodworking competition on the web that we can find so far. So, but it started as a once a year thing. We'd send plans out uh, and everybody get it on one day. And then they'd have three weeks to build from these plans, put their own spin on it and just made a huge community from it. And it's expanded now that we run a new challenge every month. We have everything from furniture building to art projects to furniture flipping to mallet challenges. I mean, we do stuff year round just to bring the community together. And uh, man, we have some awesome prizes too. What kind of what kind of submissions rate do you get participating in in one of your projects? So, like I said, we, we'll pick a secret plan essentially or a theme. So we've had uh, we've had desk, we've had anything from coffee tables and people just go with it. We have three different um, categories, basically. We have our novice builders, so they're just starting out. We have our intermediate, and we have our finest craftsmen. And man, when you see these finest craftsmen things, we have requirements of different jo uh, joinery that has to go in there. Uh, they have to use different types of material or hardwood. And when you see some of these things come out, like desk-wise or coffee table or media table, it's insane. I mean, the, the quality that comes out of these folks. That's cool, that's cool. And, and you get different flavors from across the country. I mean, across the world, it's, it's international. We get people from wow. all over the world entering this. Tell the folks where, where they can find that again. So they can find it on uh, at Makers Challenge Central, and it's all on Instagram. All right, hey, thanks for sharing that. No problem. Well, hey, Adam, uh, this is like uh, our third project. I don't know about you, but after especially the first trip and i was only on site a few days for the second trip this one we've we've been here sticking it out and and uh uh we're gonna need a couple of days off when we get back home where are we going <laughs> better involve a fishing pole that's right <laughs> right we can go meet my family at the beach that's what we can do <laughs> all right adam thank you so much absolutely uh, lazy guy diy uh apostrophes bs <laughs> and and there ain't no way but folks stick around follow our friend adam and beardbrothers.com the socials instagram and and facebook and the rest and uh don't be afraid to jump on youtube you never know who's going to show up on uh not studio 3b project tyanesta and american hardwood advisor take care for all you folks listening Thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time, 